Hell yeah. Give it up one more time for Alexis, right? Who's awesome? That's great. I have no idea how my Martin Luther King material is going to follow her. So I'm really nervous. You guys are too. That's good. I like that. Um, actually, I actually want to talk to you about something different. Can I talk to you guys about the time I had sex with a 60 year old lady? You guys down to talk about that? Hell yeah, it's a great start. Thank you for the enthusiasm. Yeah, my, uh, I had sex uh, with a 60 year old lady, and uh, I don't usually go for older women. Not usually my thing. Nothing against them. It's just that I am adopted, and my mom's out there somewhere. You know, that's basically, it's a gamble. I don't need to be out in the streets playing this game of incest roulette. No, thank you. My friends, they love this bar. They call it the Cougar Bar. They always try to get me to go. They're like, come on, man, let's go meet some cougars. Let's go meet some MILFs. I'm like, look, guys, there's only one MILF for me, okay? And that's the mom I'd like to find. That's my kind of cool. You guys are fun. <laughs> but yeah, they drag me out to the bar. Immediately, this woman strikes up a conversation with me by, by saying, oh my God, you look just like a friend I had years ago. She's like, can I buy you a drink? And uh, obviously she bought me a drink I had to have sex with her. That's how that works, right? That's the rule. So we buy you a drink. So I had sex with that lady. And I guess technically if she's my mom, it's not a one night stand. Because I've been inside her before. Uh, <laughs> it's not her first, okay. No, I don't think she's my mom. That seems unlikely. When I woke up the next morning, she was gone. What are the odds the same lady abandoned me twice? <laughs> that seems unlikely. Cool. You guys are fun. This is fun. I am really adopted. Give it up for that, right? Give it up for... You don't have to. That's fine. I've already been given up enough, let's be honest. Uh, but yeah. Growing up, my mom... Oh, this is my rebound mom now. Uh, but she was also always super open about me being adopted. But she was telling me, she's like, the, the, the first time I got you, she, the first thing I did was undress you to make sure everything was there. And she's like, I was so relieved to see that you were circumcised. Two things. Relieved? Is that a big burden for you that you're worried about that? Second thing, obviously, you didn't want everything to be there, all right? I said, okay. Yeah, and then she said, and you know what, for a baby, you had a pretty good dick. And I, and I still carry that, because you know what? I still have a pretty good dick for a baby. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Cool. Let's talk about something else. I work for Wawa. You guys like Wawa? Woo! Into that? Hell yeah. Wawa, warmer reception than most of the comedians tonight. I'll give you guys that. That's nice. But yeah, I work for Wawa. I, work, I do Wawa during the day. I do comedy at night. Really just doing the comedy until the Wawa thing works out. And... Uh, <laughs> I think my day is coming any day, <laughs> any day now. But yeah, we're good. Working customer service and food stuff. Do me a favor, clap it up if you work customer service anytime, retail, any kind of service industry. Hell yeah, a lot of good people. If you'd never worked those jobs, I'm not judging you. It's you know, tip, just tip before you go. Tip. Hell yeah. I think everybody should have to work customer service at some point, though. at least for a little bit, right? You should have to work a little bit of customer service. You should definitely have worked customer service before you tell me that you're pro-life. I think that should be a thing. I think once you work customer service for a little bit, you're like, I don't know. I don't know if everybody needs to be born. I don't know if we need everybody. Every person needs, no, we don't need them all. Yeah, customer service here in Philly is tough. It's weird to be talked down to by someone wearing Looney Tunes pajamas, right? That's weird. I have a coworker who got stabbed twice at work. That's pretty crazy, right? That's pretty nuts. Craziest part of that story is that that's not why he quit. I think that's the craziest part. But he got stabbed twice. So he got stabbed, and then Wawa's solution was to move him to a new store. That's what they do. They move you to a new store. Basically treat you the same way you, you treat priests, right? This will solve everything. And just like with the priests, it happened again. What's that saying? Stab me once, shame on you. Okay, I'm not gonna hurry. Right. Lost you guys. I'm in a relationship. Can we talk about that? Are we into that? My relationship? 
All right, I'll let her know. <laughs> it's good. It's going. It's going pretty good. Unfortunately, her parents do not like me. Uh, but as we've established, I am adopted. This has happened before, so <laughs> we'll bounce back. I feel pretty good. But yeah, uh, we we just moved in together. That's exciting. First time ever living with a partner. That's cool. Also, partner her word. She makes me say that. She makes me say that because she is a queer woman, and she does not want anyone to know that she's dating a man. So if you guys, if you guys keep that on the DL, she'd appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I like I like partner. Um, it's growing on me. You know, it sounds like we're trying to solve a mystery. I like that. Every mystery is why are you mad at me today? That's how it is. It's usually a joke I wrote. But we just moved in together. Here's the best part of living together. Maybe you guys will be on my side. We have separate bedrooms. You guys into it? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. A couple cool people, a lot of nerds. That's fine. A lot of clingy dorks. Uh, that's okay. I love having se I'm so into having separate bedrooms. It's awesome. Cause I, feel, I feel like we're, I'm still single, you know? I'll go to bed. She'll go to bed in her room. I'll shoot her a text. What's going on? You up? <laughs> you want to come, come over? Swing by? She comes over, we have sex. Afterwards, I'm like, you should get out of here. You should go. You should leave. You know, I am a gentleman. I always walk her to her door. Right, guys? That's the move. But yeah, I love, I love it. This is awesome. A friend of mine was worried. He's like, dude, aren't you worried that she's going to cheat on you? And uh, absolutely not. I'm more worried about you, actually. <laughs> what kind of relationship are you in? where you're worried your person's cheating on you in the next room. <laughs> That's concerning. Dude's just like in the kitchen doing dishes like, she better not be fucking somebody 10 feet away. I'd be pretty bummed. Some people are like, what are you gonna tell your kids? When you get married, have kids, what are you gonna tell them? And uh, honestly, I'm not worried about it. It's gotta be an easier conversation than when my parents told me they were gonna sleep in separate houses, right? That's probably easier. <laughs> All right, a lot of kids are divorced in here. That's fine. It's too close to home. That's on me. Do me a favor. Clap it up if your parents are divorced. Clap it up. All in the back. That's, yeah, that's fine. Is it your fault? Clap it up if it's your fault. <laughs> it, is, it is not my fault. I know it's not my fault because my parents sat me down and told me it wasn't my fault. And people are like, oh, everyone's parents do that. It's like, yeah, but my parents did that, but my sister wasn't there. So I feel like... I probably had a different conversation with her. <laughs> yeah. I am grateful to be in a relationship because I uh, dated in the pandemic. Anyone else date in the pandemic? Woo. Yep, that's, the apps were pretty empty. That explains a lot. Uh, it was pretty rough. I remember being on Tinder in, in, in the pandemic, and this woman in her bio said, don't bother if you're one of those sheeple who wears a mask. And I was like, holy shit, this lady is gonna have unprotected sex with me. That's gonna be awesome. That's gonna rule. I don't know about COVID, but we're gonna, we're gonna spread something, right? All right, that's weird. You learn your red flags as you date. I was on a date with this woman. She told me that she thinks that watching porn is cheating. I uh, don't agree with that. I was like, lady, I've already cheated on you on this date. <laughs> Technically. Man, if she feels this strongly about porn, she's definitely not going to like when I fuck other people. She's not going to like that. <laughs> I'll tell you one more story, and I'm going to go, because you guys are awesome. This is a great time. Give it up for yourselves for being an awesome audience. This is a cool night. Uh, I'll tell you about the time I was on a date, had sex on a first date. You guys like sex on a first date? Yeah. Hell yeah, a couple cool people in here, and a bunch of dorks again. But uh, I love sex on a first date, because you know what that means. No more dating. You're done dating that person. That guy, <laughs> the man that just announced, I love sex. It's kind of weird. I think, we, I think it's generally everywhere you go, we all agree that sex rules. And we don't need to let anyone know about it. Just, that's fine. I don't, I, it's not. The, <laughs> I think you should keep everything to yourself. <laughs> I think that's what I'm worried I don't, I don't know. I don't know what else you have to tell me. I'm just concerned about it. What was I talking about? I was talking about this lady I had sex with. Okay, cool. Just bragging up here. I'm telling this guy, don't talk about sex while I'm like, hey guys, by the way, I fuck sometimes. 
Uh, actually, I rescind everything I made fun of before. I'm a bully, and I'm sorry. <laughs> so I fucked this chick, and no. I'm on a date, and uh, this woman comes on me very aggressively. She writes me back to her place. We go back there, and she's like, hey, just to let you know, I like it kind of rough. I was like, all right, I think I can handle that. So we're fooling around, and as we get into it, she's like, okay, now I need you to punch me in the face. <laughs> I was like, on the first date. <laughs> I was like, actually, I think, a lady, I think I misled you. I actually do not like it rough. <laughs> I did not punch that lady in the face. Uh, she told me that that made me a little bitch. <laughs> I was like, honestly, lady, if I punched you, you'd be saying the same thing. So <laughs> I'm not gonna punch you. I didn't punch that lady. I also didn't realize this, so agreeing to be rough with her up top apparently meant that I was consenting to her beating the shit out of me. Didn't know that was part of the deal. <laughs> That lady hurt me so much. I'm a hairier guy, I have a lot of chest hair. Uh, she took that. <laughs> it's, it's hers now. Yeah, the next morning we get up. And she's like, you know, we could do this again. But you'd have to step your game up. And I was like, holy shit, uh, obviously yes, you are great for material. So yes, let's hang out again. And it worked out perfectly on the second date. We were hanging out and she told me, uh, that she had voted for Trump. And I was like, yo, I'm gonna punch the shit out of this lady. <laughs> and then I beat that lady up, and you guys are cool about it. That's pretty cool. You got the guys, this has been next in line. Get up for yourselves. It's been an awesome night, right? Hell yeah. Get up for all the comments you saw. Here's the deal. We do shows here every Saturday night, two shows, a late show and an early show. Uh, we ask, we often, we, we like have the option of tipping. So if you'd like to tip, all the tips go directly to the comics so we can pay them even more, you know. They get some ticket sales, but it's, it's awesome if we can pay them more. But we really appreciate you guys. There's a tipping thing over there, and it'll be at the bottom of the steps of the tip jar as well. Uh, thanks so much for being here, guys. Really appreciate it. Have a great night. Give it up for yourselves one more time. Hell yeah.